Hi, welcome to part two of working with developers. Today we'll talk about one of the most important parts of developer collaboration, the assets. Assets generally mean images that can't be recreated in code. Luckily, many simple shapes, objects and effects can be done in code and you don't need to export assets for them. Years ago, when I started and you wanted to create a gradient button, you had to export the entire thing as an image. Now it's just a line or two of CSS. However, everything that's not possible to easily do in code, you need to provide to your developers. There are two main types of images you will be using raster and vector. Let's start with vectors as they're a bit easier. In most cases, to use a vector in a web project, you simply need to export something as SVG. That stands for Scalable Vector Graphics. This format is great for icons and small shapes that are, as the name suggests, made with vectors. That means they're created using the lines and fills and that you can also edit or modify them in your design tool before exporting. Vector files are great because you only need one file to cover all the possible scaling. They scale great without any loss of sharpness and look great on all kinds of screens. When exporting SVGs, however, it's actually good to copy the actual icon out of your design and place it on a canvas in a new frame or artboard. Just to show you exactly how I do it, we have this arrow here and it's 13.6 by 11 points. So I'm just gonna create a new frame and I'm gonna make it 16 by 16. It's a pretty good number for small icons. Then I'm going to paste the icon inside, but for me to be able to see it, I'm going to change the fill color for the background to black. Okay, now let's paste the arrow inside. And of course, as you can see, it's not exactly in the middle because of the height of the icon. So you can either auto align it or simply for the Y value, you can add a 0.5 and it should be in the center. Now you can simply remove that fill color and have the icon on a transparent background. Now what we need to do is to create an export option for it as an SVG and then of course rename the frame. So always keep a naming convention that's gonna be easy to understand by the developers. In my case, I'm just gonna call it arrow. If you have a lot of similar sized icons in your design, you can create a 32 by 32 canvas for each one and place them in the very middle then export the SVG out of that. That method can often help developers with auto-aligning the icons to buttons or text because they're instantly the right height. Okay, now let's talk raster. Rasters are used for photos or other difficult to achieve effects like beams of light, lasers, and some mesh gradients but mostly photos and photorealistic decorations like the leaves that you can see here. For photos, there are a couple of formats you can use, either JPEG, PNG, or some other more modern formats like WebP and similar. JPEG doesn't have transparency, so keep that in mind if you're not just doing regular photographs. PNG usually has the best quality and has transparency, but for complex photos, it can be quite big and impact loading time. And yeah, users don't really like that. Today, let's focus on smaller decorative PNGs like the leaves. There there are a couple of things you need to understand about raster graphics. First of all, that there are no screens that have much higher pixel density. It means that you likely need to export these images in a couple of resolutions. 1x will be fine for regular displays, while 2x or even 3x can work better on high density displays and most smartphones. If you use the 1x image on those displays, it would simply look pixelated and ugly. Most tools allow you to export PNGs as 1, 2, 3 and even more x with multiple versions and naming conventions. However, just like with SVGs, it's actually good for developers if the images are all within a canvas of the same or similar size. If your image here is 48 by 29 pixels, you can easily place it in a square that's 64 by 64. Then export all the resolutions from that base 1x. If all similar assets are placed within squares like that, it will make it a lot easier for developers to add them in code as they won't have to check the dimensions each time and moving the objects will be a lot easier to calculate too. Okay, now let's take care of our raster image. So I'm gonna duplicate the image that we have and it's an image of a leaf that has the same image of the leaf underneath that moved a little bit to the bottom and blurred. So that creates that more natural looking shadow. So I'm gonna create a frame around it and this time I'm gonna go with 160 by 160. That way, the entire frame with the shadow is going to fit inside. And this is really important. We don't want the shadow to be cut off. You can go with any size that you can then reuse. So if you have some similar sized assets, 160 by 160 can work. But of course, you can go with smaller numbers as well. 
just as long as they're easy to remember for the developers. And then in the export options, simply click the plus button three times to add the 1x, 2x and 3x option. Before you export, however, zoom in quite closely and see if that shadow doesn't go outside of the boundaries of the frame, because that's going to be visible. So in this case, we have about half a point or half a pixel left, and that's good. In our case, all of the other leaves in the design are the exact same asset, only smaller, rotated or blurred. So it doesn't really matter, we can simply leave it like this. We don't need to blur the assets and export them individually. Developers can do this in code. But if you want to have an ability to also use the asset without the shadow, you can simply duplicate that artwork that you just created and remove the shadow from it. And of course, right now, the actual size of the asset is smaller, as you can see, especially on the bottom here, but it's best not to modify the frame size. You can simply export both at the same size just in case. So these are the very basics of creating a set of image assets for developers. Let me know in the comments how you handle the assets and what you want me to cover next in the designer developer handoff. As usual, like, subscribe, and most of all, have a beautiful day. Cheers. Uh -huh.